an electric vehicle bring in a garage. This isn't a new thing, and I'm going to go over three different incidents that happen involving garage fires and electric vehicles. And you might be surprised to know that all three of these incidents are very different. Battery failure while charging is a common failure mode with electric vehicles. And where do most people charge their vehicles? In their garage. And that can be a major issue for firefighters. Recently, in the last week, there have been two incidents involving electric vehicles burning in garages. Many of you reached out to me and shared this most recent incident, and it happened on January 10th, 2024, in Colorado. The fire department there, they have a huge YouTube following. They did a great job documenting that incident. And if you want to see the video, you can click the link right up here. Should be a gray box and see the video in full. But I'm going to talk about some questions that my viewers had. Now, this incident involved a Jaguar I-Pace and it caught fire because of a battery failure while charging. This is a known issue with this vehicle. In fact, it was recalled twice in 2023. The first time was early in the spring and the second recall for the same issue the notices were mailed on December 15th, 2023. Overall, the fire department did a great job. They did everything I talk about in my in-person trainings. They knocked down the fire. They hooked chains to that vehicle. They drug that vehicle out of the garage. They got that vehicle away from the structures and they deployed a fire blanket. When they're applying that fire blanket, everybody in the application process is wearing full PPE SCBA. But make sure you treat these incidents like a hazmat scene. Have your hot zone there. Don't allow other personnel around that vehicle while it's off-gassing if they don't have their SCBA on. Now, one misconception and one thing they talk about in the video that's a misconception, that fire blanket is not going to extinguish the fire. It's not going to stop those batteries that are in Thermal Runaway. That's an exothermic chemical reaction. They don't need oxygen from the outside atmosphere to burn. Now, depending on the state of the vehicle, that fire blanket can help smother the fire in the other materials, the carpeting the cloth around the seats, the plastic inside of that vehicle. It can help keep all that material from burning. What shocked me though, is that they were able to put this vehicle on a tow truck while it was still technically burning, while those batteries were still in thermal runaway inside the battery box. This is where you have to have a great working relationship with your tow companies because there's a lot of tow companies out there that won't touch electric vehicles. And they're sure not gonna put a burning electric vehicle Although it's not free burning, there's no flame, but they're not going to put this hazard on their tow truck and risk their tow truck. This vehicle was thermally damaged, so there's always a risk of reignition. A reignition on the back of a tow truck wouldn't be a great thing. I always recommend when you have a thermally damaged electric vehicle that an apparatus follow that tow truck to the salvage yard, or at least to the city limits if you don't like your neighbors. They offloaded that vehicle at the tow yard. They made sure it was clear of any other vehicle. So if it did catch on fire, it did have an issue, it wouldn't catch anything else on fire. But as an added precaution, they left that fire blanket on the vehicle to make sure that the fire had no chance of spreading. And you can see while they're unloading this vehicle, it's still smoking. It's still on fire underneath that blanket. Overall, the department in Colorado, they did a great job with this incident. Everything they're supposed to do. My only comment is that misconception about smothering the batteries. I want to take a moment to make an announcement. This channel has grown far faster than I ever would have expected, and I owe it all to you. Liking these videos, sharing the content, subscribing to the channel, it's been great, and I want to take this up to the next level. I'm currently offering a challenge coin. If you're not familiar, the challenge coin has a deep-rooted military history that's transferred into the police and fire service. It's typically something given to commemorate a special occasion. And there's two ways to get this custom challenge coin. You can go to my website, shop.stashtraining.com and become part of the crew. I have exclusive discounts, a members only Discord channel where we can be a little bit more interactive. Another option for the next week, if you spend $50 or more at the shop, I'll send out a coin with your order. Thank you for your support. I create this content for you. The next incident happened on January 3rd in Michigan. And this involved two electric vehicles charging. At this incident, they had a Tesla inside the garage of this house. Just outside the garage, they had a Volvo park, and the garage door was open. Both of these vehicles were charging with a 110-volt charger. Unfortunately, the charger was plugged into an extension cord. The connection between the extension cord and the charger caught fire. It caught material in the garage on fire, catching the Tesla on fire. The high-voltage battery became involved. Large fire, but because that garage door was open, the Volvo was eventually an exposure as well. So now you have a vehicle burning inside a garage, a vehicle burning outside a garage, and a big mess on your hands. This is a common issue with electric vehicle owners. 
they don't understand the electrical requirements for their chargers, either the level one or level two chargers. They plug these things into extension cores, they don't wire the outlets properly, they don't use commercial grade outlets, and you end up with fires. Now with this incident, they knocked down the fire, they hooked chains to that Volvo, they pulled it down the driveway, they got in there with chains, they hooked it to the Tesla, pulled it out of the garage. Luckily for them, the battery in the Tesla seemed to have burned through all the material. After they knocked down the fire, it stayed out. They didn't have any issues with that. The Volvo, that high voltage battery never became involved, so they were very fortunate in that regard. The last incident involved a Tesla in a garage early in 2023, and this one was in Michigan as well. This fire started because of an electrical problem in the garage. The garage caught fire, the fire department came, they found that Tesla involved in the fire as well, but when they knocked down that fire, that high voltage battery never caught fire. So it wasn't a big deal for them. They were able to knock down the fire very quickly. They got that Tesla out of the garage. Now, there is still a hazard there because that is a thermally damaged vehicle and that vehicle has a chance to reignite at the tow yard. But thankfully, that wasn't the case in this incident. It's a great reminder that just because you have an electric vehicle fire doesn't mean you're going to be on scene for hours. Get in there, knock down the fire. If that high voltage battery is not on fire, it's a traditional vehicle fire. A couple hundred gallons of water, it should go out. These types of incidents can be challenging for fire departments. All three of these departments did a great job. They got the fire out. They dealt with the problem. If you want to learn more about how improper wiring can cause these types of garage fires, click this link right here.